Hi everyone, um, welcome to the Green Tech Festival, welcome to this panel today. I'm super excited to be moderating this panel today, but since we only have a packed 30 minutes to talk about our topic today, I would like to jump into our topic right away. So today's big question um, will be the question, is HR leadership the key to sustainable transformation? And alongside with me, I have these great experts in the field who are going to share their insights and knowledge um, on how or if, so, also, um, and how and if HR can drive sustainable change. Sylvie Nickel, Executive VP in Human Resources, Infrastructure and Sustainability at Henkel. And over there, Henny Weiser, the Head of Talent and Diversity Management at Lufthansa. A very warm welcome. So, Sylvia and Henny, um, I would like to ask both of you, just briefly introduce yourself again. Um, who are you and what is your relation to the topic? Sylvia, would you like to go first? Yes, yeah, thank you. So, hi everybody, very happy to be there. So, my name is Sylvie and I'm actually uh, responsible at Henkel for human resources globally, but as well for what we call corporate sustainability and I'm a member of the management board of Henkel for five years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Henny, how about you? Who are you and what's your relation to the topic? Well, um, at Lufthansa, I'm responsible for making sure that we attract and retain the, the, the people that we need, right, to create sustainable uh, change in our industry, uh, to do our job well. Um, so uh, um, I'm heading a section that runs talent programs, that runs diagnostics, uh, that runs performance management. So we have different levers to, uh, to make sure we create change here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, I would like to jump into the discussion. As said, we only have 30 minutes, so let's start. Um, Sylvie, the first question goes to you. Um, on your LinkedIn profile, I read the following. My team's mission is to build a strong company culture and empower our people to enable a successful business. What does a strong company culture actually mean to you? Good, so first, I'm glad you've been reading the LinkedIn <laughs> profile. Um, so maybe to start with, uh, at Henkel we ident identify three levers to drive sustainable progress. Uh, our products, our services, technologies. Uh, the second one is our partnership with our customers, our suppliers, or with startups or other companies. And the third one is our people. Mm -hmm. And speaking about the third one, our people, we truly believe that creating a culture where sustainability is at the center mm -hmm. is of utmost importance to drive progress. That starts with the values. So sustainability is one of our five values at Henkel. That goes on with the purpose of the company which is uh, pioneers at heart for the good of generations. So you feel here it's not only about doing business, but how and why you do business, also thinking about the future. And that goes on with the leadership behaviors that we strive for. We have four, but two of them are relevant in that context. One is we act as entrepreneur, and the second one, we collaborate as a strong team. We believe sustainability requires courage, disruption and working together as teams. So starting from our values, going on with our purpose and with the leadership behaviors we encourage, we try to create a culture where, let's say, sustainability is embodied in mm -hmm. and really encouraging our employees to live it. Perfect. And why is a strong company culture essential in order to face sustainability goals? Eventually, if uh, you don't embody sustainability into the culture, but as well into the strategy business, it stays a project. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is the best way to fail. Sustainability is not a project. It is the way we should operate, we should think, we should strategize, we should transform. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it has to be part of this strong culture where we empower people and we strengthen their ability to collaborate. Yes, round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Henny, Lufthansa Group um, operates in an industry with significant environmental impacts. How relevant are Lufthansa's environmental objectives in terms of your talent management? Yeah. Um, well, I think some of you know we have quite ambitious uh, goals. We want to be carbon neutral in 2050. 
uh, and that requires some, some serious engagement, some bold decisions, lots of innovation. Um, and from my experience over the last couple of years, this plays a crucial role in talent management in two different aspects. First of all, uh, we can measure that there's actually an expectation from the, from the young generation, from the next generation of talent that we're trying to attract, um, to see uh, um, authentic commitment to the cause. People don't want to work to a company that, for a company that is part of a problem. People want to work for a company uh, that, that aims at being part of a solution, right? Um, so uh, we feel it's absolutely necessary in our HR marketing campaigns, in recruiting, uh, to talk about sustainability, to talk about what we do, and how a, a young person, an incoming person, actually can contribute because that is a second thing that I observe. Uh, people don't want to go to work and get paid. People want to make a difference with what they do. Yeah. Um, so that means that in talent management, we are creating platforms and programs for people to do ex exactly that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have very successfully established a trainee program, the Green Mobility Trainee, uh, that is focused uh, on the topic of, of sustainability, uh, of working on projects dedicated to the cause. Uh, we have a program for high performers dedicated uh, to uh, working on challenges, uh, making suggestions to the company. Uh, and we feel this is being appreciated, but we are all also being measured against this, mm -hmm. right? Are we really serious about this? Are we authentic uh, with that offer? Um, so I'm, I'm personally taking that very seriously and trying to make sure to create that, that space for innovation and collaboration uh, that Sylvie also talked about. Mm -hmm. So are you constantly adapting um, those trainings, et cetera, to um, be on track of time as well? Absolutely, we have a process of re revisiting what we do every year. Uh, also, of course, considering the feedback that we, uh, that we get, we're very strongly collaborating with the people um, in sustainability management, in innovation, uh, to make sure we have the right content and the right partners. Um, and I think we're, in talent management, we're very humble. Like, <laughs> we're not the experts um, on all of these topics, but we have great experts around us um, also in the startup world where we collaborate. Um, and we're trying to bring that all in uh, to make sure we, we have the knowledge in the company uh, to, to take the steps forward that we need to take. Thank you. Sylvie, um, I have the feeling there is a perception that sustainability always deals with contradicting targets. Let me make an example. Being carbon neutral versus profitability. Is that true? Have you some experience on that? Yeah, I, I would say yes. There is some truth into it. Um, that's a topic I'm very passionate about, I have <laughs> to say. So I've been 20 years in the business before doing HR and corporate sustainability. And uh, doing business is also a lot about contradicting targets. Yeah. And I think sustainability is not different. So you always have two ways to think at things. Whether you think in terms of challenges, costs, constraints, it's difficult. Or you think in terms of opportunities. Mm -hmm. And the moment you start to think in terms of opportunities, you see less contradiction. Because actually what eventually, initially, you might see at the cost to transform. Uh, you might discover that there are fantastic business opportunities because it's an encouragement to innovate. And sometimes you come to very innovative disruptions which will create opportunities on the market. Oh. It, you can also discover that sometimes it's an opportunity actually not to spend but to save because you come to solutions which allow you to optimize your PNL or to eventually diversify your sourcing strategy. So not being dependent on one, but having multiple sources or suppliers you can deal with. So I, I really believe it's a question of mindset. I don't want to be naive and to say there is no cost in sustainability transformation. For sure there is one. But you also need to think in terms of cost avoidance. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't change now, the cost which might trigger in the future might be tremendous. If you don't change now, there is an opportunity that eventually you will not be in the business yeah. in two decades. So what might seem today like a really challenging situation to deal with, if you extend your time frame, if you extend your way of thinking, can really become an opportunity. But it takes sometimes hard work to explain it and to move 
from this, oh, it's tough, it's challenging, it's cost, to yes, it's great opportunity, it's transformative, it's long-term oriented, and actually at the end, it will be your license to operate. Thank you. Um, I really like the emphasis. Thank you so much. Um, what, is, like, what is the advice? Do you have an advice for other C-levels or um, founders, uh, company owners? What can they do to, to get the courage and to actually go that sustainable way? Because it is, I mean, if you do have challenges on that way as well, it's obviously quite, um, yeah, it can be very disturbing. But how do you encourage people to say, look, go take that courage and go that way, be sustainable? Yeah, that's actually a good, good question and you know, I would never dare to give lessons to anybody because each company has a different you know, starting point, different situation, different history, different mm -hmm. challenges, but maybe a few themes that can be common. I would say the first thing is you need to think mid-term, long-term and for sure not only short-term because sustainability is not about the next six months. So mm -hmm. you need to have a long-term long -term strategy, a long-term business strategy in which sustainability is embodied. Mm -hmm. The second thing is certainly you need to have a sustainability strategy in which all your employees, independent where they work, which department, which country, they can find their space where they can contribute to really mobilize forces. I think that's the second theme which is important. We do have that and we see how much that is helpful that each and every department, function, business can find their space into that. Mm -hmm. The third thing which I believe is of utmost importance is, and you mentioned it, it's about training people. Give them the skills, give them the knowledge. We have a huge sustainability training program where 10,000 people have been participating in already, and we see there is huge appetite. There is a certain complexity. You need to help yes. people to get into the topic. And finally, I would say, give a voice to your experts, make them visible. They are really great people who know, they are passionate, they want to contribute, and sometimes they are not necessarily visible in your organization. You need to organize that, you need to bring them together, some of them for Henkel are in that room, uh, and, and you need to make sure that they find their voice in the company because they might know things that the leaders do not know, oh. and you need to make sure that they have a voice. Thank you so much. Thanks for the details. Yes, you can. Round of applause is always good. <laughs> Thank you. Henny, um, what is your advice for organizations to foster a sustainability mindset? We kind of had the question already on this side, but how about you? What would you say? Yeah. Um, I, I do agree with you, Sylvie, that a lot of it is about elevating people and maybe also elevating the right people. So uh, there's a notion of taking conscious decisions also in recruiting and in placing. Um, uh, HR has a powerful role to play there because uh, in, in a company, HR is usually the function uh, defining uh, what's important when selecting people, what are the competencies that we are really looking for. Um, and I'm, I'm sure Henkel has done the same. We've built a sustainability mindset uh, um, into our competence model. So we're actually measuring people's performance against are they thinking beyond today? Um, are there, do they have a strategic foresight? Are they looking for solutions that will work the day after tomorrow as well? That's an expectation mm -hmm. that we're very explicit about. Um, and I think this creates change, especially on the, on the leadership level. And um, there again, then it, it, role modeling is taking place. People see, okay, if this is the way uh, you think, then you can be successful in this company. Um, and um, finally, uh, again, I think it's about visibility, right? Making sure you create a psychologically safe space for people to stand up and speak up and become visible with their expertise and yeah. Um, their um, assumptions about the future uh, and get together with others to create new solutions together because let's be honest we all no, no one of us has all the answers right yeah. um, so we need to bring all these different perspectives together to come up with uh, things that work and that's a role that HR can play facilitate the kind of collaboration yeah Thank you. That's a good bridge to my next question for you, Sylvie. Um, transformation always means doing something differently or for the first time. But what does it actually mean in terms of collaboration for Henkel? Yeah, it's... Um, so first of all, maybe to, to step back, I would say sustainability is certainly uh, in my entire business career, so 27 years, uh, the most humbling topic 
mm -hmm. I ever had to work on. The complexity, the richness, uh, the permanent evolution, what you need to know that actually you need to acknowledge you will probably never know, is very humbling. And therefore, it calls for maximum collaboration because you can never know everything. You always have to rely on others, be it in your own organization or out of your organization. And having been a very competitive business person in the first part of my career, I learned that on sustainability is actually different. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that as a company we will achieve on our own. It's not about classical competition. It's about collaboration also with partners. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about exchanging practices. It's about learning from others because we are here for something bigger. And uh, actually, we will only win and evolve all together. So for sure, you have a certain, let's say, competition with yourself. At a certain moment, you need to fix yourself challenging targets. You need to fight hard. For example, two years ago, we have advanced uh, our ambition to become um, climate neutral in our own operation by 10 years. That is a certain pressure we put on ourselves for the sake of achieving earlier. That's risk taking. That's what we can do on our own and we can master. When it comes to becoming a net zero company, we will have to rely on many partners. We will have to work very closely with our suppliers, with our customers. Nothing, as long as we are ambitious, we will achieve on our own. So that's collaboration beyond the classical internal collaboration in companies. That's really about how you deal with others and how you embody them into your own ambition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here comes a question for all the females and also feminists in the room, for you, Henny. Um, I read that Lufthansa is aiming at making talented females um, global-wide from all over the world um, more visible by targeting 25% of females in management position by 2025. How do you reach that goal? Yeah, <laughs> we actually we made a commitment uh, to, to the IATA, to our association, saying this is what we're going to do, 25 in 2025. Um, and uh, as some of you can imagine, aviation is in, in many areas a very male-dominated sphere. Um, when we started working on that, I think we started off at roughly 20% women on senior management positions. So 5% is really a big leap. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's about four different things. One is to uh, encourage women to stand up. Um, uh, it seems that also um, empirically, when you look in, in studies, you'll see uh, that women often are a bit more hesitant than their male counterparts um, to, to take a leap of faith and, and show themselves and say, this is uh, what I can do. Um, uh, so we work a lot with empowering programs, um, uh, leadership trainings, of course, um, to, to elevate women in this sense. Um, we also looked into our HR processes. Um, we made sure that for every placement process, uh, there's a certain percentage of women candidates. Um, because, you know, it's so easy to say, you know, no woman is applying, what can I do? Um, so our answer now is, well, you could look harder. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually makes a big, a big difference too. Um, I got a last figure yesterday, and we're actually at 24.9% um, as per the first quarter. Um, so I think we need a new ambition. I'd yes. say 30% <laughs> in 2030 is probably a good number. Um, we'll just continue what we're, what we're doing. Um, and um, I feel that role modeling, of course, always makes, makes a big difference. And last but not least, um, I'm very grateful for all the, the male allies that we get. Um, yeah. Colleagues that say, yeah, of course, we need a diverse leadership group um, to, to be a performant leadership team. Um, and, you know, tell me what to do uh, to, to um, help foster inclusiveness. I think that makes a difference, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.
So taking a look at the time, we got roughly seven minutes left. I would like to ask each of you one more question, and then I would like to wrap up the panel. So Sylvie, as far as I'm concerned, um, an equally positive question for your side and for Henkel. As far as I'm concerned, um, Henkel plans to become climate positive by 2040. What steps are being taken within the HR department to support this goal? Alors, maybe I start first with a <laughs> corrective statement. We used to plan to become climate positive in our own okay. operation by 2040, yeah. and now we have committed to achieve that in 2030. So oh, we, have, wow. we have anticipated our ambition. Um, and, and that's uh, in our own operations. Uh, and, uh, and that's really on the, and maybe a good opportunity to also give credit Uh, that goes to all the colleagues who are working in our, all our production facilities across the world uh, because that takes huge efforts from everyone to transform our operations, to go to renewable energy, to master all the processes that they have been mastering so far differently in the future, so to use all options that they have at hand to transform the way we produce for Henkel. But I would say that's only a small piece of the transformation we have to execute because, as you know, the real sustainable transformation will come with the fact of becoming a net zero company. And for that, we are working hard on defining our pathway. We have not yet committed to an exact year, mm -hmm. but for sure that will come. We are working on defining that. So that, that's, let's say, one part of the ambition that we have. We have many more ambitions when it comes to environment, uh, because certainly that is only one component, but there is much more that companies like us can do, be it on circularity, be it on water. So we are covering all that, that, these dimensions. And that's certainly not the end of the journey, because as you know, in sustainability, there is environment, but there is also <laughs> social responsibility. Yes which plays a very important role and where we believe as a company dealing with 47,000 people in all the regions in the world, we have a role to play, be it with our employees, be it with our communities, and we also have a significant program along the social dimension for Henkel. So it's certainly a journey that will not be over before I finish my career at Henkel. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we will try to uh, maximize the impact that we can do in the coming years and lay down the plans, but uh, that is certainly something that will keep the next generations extremely busy mm -hmm. to transform for good. Mm -hmm. Yes, a round of applause is always good. <laughs> you don't have Thank to you. do that each time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, this, um, especially the part of social responsibility, gave me a good bridge again for, for the last question for you, Henny. Um, DE&I initiatives are an integral aspect of sustainable transformation, in my opinion. Um, so, how can HR foster diversity to support sustainability goals with HR? Hmm. Um, well, Diversity has many dimensions, uh, right? Um, over the last couple of years, I think there's been a, a strong focus on gender, but that's, uh, that's a shortcoming from my perspective. People can be uh, different on so many different levels. We have different backgrounds, uh, different education, um, uh, different orientation. Um, and I think the most important role that HR can play uh, is to make sure that people feel safe to bring their whole self to work. Uh, because what we want to create good solutions is everyone's experience, uh, everyone's perspective with all the, the different angles that people look at the world uh, to, to create something, something new for sustainable transformation. Um, uh, I think leadership plays a big role to create an inclusive environment. I've, I've used the term psychological safety. Again, we have, we're very into psychological safety. It's a term from the cockpit, so it's all our world. And it's basically um, about making sure people are okay to speak up. And we train our leaders to um, make sure they create this sort of environment. It's a way to go. Um, Uh, because this hasn't been part of the leadership curriculum over the, over the last decades. Um, but I think this is where, where uh, we, make, uh, we make the biggest difference. Um, and then once people are there, I feel it's important uh, to connect them. Uh -huh. uh, make sure you're not alone. 
uh, it's, you know, it's never fun to be alone, to be the only one in the room. So we work with, with communities and interest groups to make sure people can uh, give peer-to-peer -peer support, uh, feel connected to a group, um, feel at home in the company, and also uh, dare to speak up for the interests of what, whatever the community they feel they belong to. Uh, and there's been a very, a very honest conversation going on between HR people and, and the volunteers in these communities. Uh, we try to listen very hard what the needs are and, and some beautiful initiatives paying into the sustainability uh, need have, have come out of this. And, and I think um, if every company does that, uh, we'll see some beautiful results uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So, oh, that brings us uh, to the end of the panel, <laughs> almost. Um, is there anything else you guys would like to add to what you've been said so far? <laughs> Any, Sylvie? Whoever likes to go first. I think we could probably be uh, going on for hours because the, the topics that we touch upon are so fundamental, right? Uh, collaboration, innovation. Um, um, before we came on stage, we talked about how the COVID years have, have taught us um, uh, how to collaborate more closely uh, across functions and hierarchy levels and, and create more solution orientation. Um, and yeah, I think if, if our function, if the HR function uh, can contribute to that, um, probably everyone in this room uh, would, would benefit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank maybe you. to add to that, so first thank you for the invitation. I think it's always a great opportunity for us to be able to talk about what we do. Um, and maybe uh, to, to conclude, I would say, you know, being, being a leader in, in big responsibility today in big corporations is very exciting. On the other hand, I believe it's a big responsibility that we need to embrace because, it's, again, it's no longer about only doing business, which is very exciting, but it's also about um, certainly paving the way and, uh, and leaving a legacy for what is to come. So I think uh, business um, people never had so important responsibility towards society and towards the world. And, uh, and uh, welcome to all the ones who are willing to embrace that yes. because it's really a fantastic journey also from a personal standpoint. Thank you so much. Yeah, to me, um, it was a very fruitful conversation. I think we gained a lot of insights. And I think it's also or became pretty clear that HR does play a crucial role in driving sustainability efforts with incumbent um, organizations from fostering diversity to embedding um, sustainability goals into HR practices. So to me, this conversation obviously doesn't end here. Um, let's try to innovate, um, connect, and collaborate, but also feel responsible for one another, and more so, feel responsible for a future that is sustainable and that allows opportunities and chances for every individual in this society. Thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed uh, seeing all your faces here, so have a good and great day at Green Tech Festival. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's time to wake up.